we have completed z parameters y parameters and h parameters and now we are going to have discussion on g parameters and g parameters are also known as inverse hybrid parameters and if you remember in case of h parameters out of four variables we are having in our two port network current i1 along with voltage v2ver the independent variables and voltage v1 along with current i2 were the dependent variables now in case of g parameters the scenario will be opposite here we have v1 along with i2 as the independent variables and i1 along with v2 as the dependent variables i will write down this point voltage v1 along with current i2 are the independent variables and current i1 along with voltage v2 are the dependent variables this means i1 will depend on both v1 and i2 and therefore we can say that current i1 is the function of both voltage v1 and current i2 and v2 will also depend on both v1 and i2 therefore voltage v2 will also be the function of v1 and i2 now from here we will have two equations equation number one is current i1 current i1 equal to parameter g11 multiplied to v1 plus parameter g12 multiplied to i2 and let's say this is our equation number one and we have the second equation v2 voltage v2 equal to parameter g to one multiplied to v1 plus parameter g to two multiplied to i2 and let's say this is our equation number two and we can write the two equations in the matrix form in the matrix form we will have one two by one matrix having the elements as i1 and v2 equal to the multiplication of two by two matrix and 2 by 1 matrix 2 by 2 matrix will have the elements g11 g12 g21 and g22 and 2 by 1 matrix will have the elements v1 and i2 v1 and current i2 this is the matrix form and the square matrix we are having is known as g parameters matrix and we represent it like this and now let us find out all the four g parameters and we will start with g11 we can have g11 we can have it from equation number one when i2 is equal to zero so parameter g11 is equal to current i1 when divided by voltage v1 and the condition is current i2 must be equal to zero and it is very easy to name parameter g11 we have seen how to name two port parameters in the earlier lectures and therefore this time i will directly write down the names of the parameters g11 we call as open circuit driving point input admittance so this is the complete name of parameter g11 and we can write parameter g11 equal to 1 over v1 divided by current i1 when current i2 is equal to 0 and we know v1 over i1 when i2 is equal to 0 is equal to parameter z11 so from here we will have parameter g11 
equal to 1 over parameter z11. Now we will obtain parameter g21 and we can have g21 from equation number 2 when i2 is equal to 0. So parameter g21 is equal to voltage v2 divided by voltage v1 when current i2 is equal to 0 and we call g21 open circuit open circuit forward voltage gain forward voltage gain and now let us find out parameter g12 we can have g12 from equation number one when v1 is equal to zero so we will have parameter g12 equal to current i1 divided by current i2 current i1 divided by current i2 and the condition is voltage v1 is equal to zero and we call parameter g12 short circuit short circuit reverse current gain reverse current gain now let us find out the last g parameter which is g22 we can have parameter g22 from equation number two when v1 is equal to zero so parameter g22 will be equal to v2 divided by i2 voltage v2 when divided by current i2 and the condition is v1 must be equal to zero and we call parameter g22 short circuit short circuit driving point driving point output impedance so this is the complete name of G22 and you can write parameter G22 equal to 1 over current I2 divided by voltage V2 when voltage V1 is equal to 0 and we know I2 when divided by V2 with condition V1 equal to 0 is parameter Y22. So we can say that parameter G22 is equal to 1 over parameter Y22. So in this way we have obtained all the 4G parameters and now we will construct the 2 port network with 4G parameters. And for this we will use equation number 1 and equation number 2. You can see that equation number 1 is a key CL equation and here we have current I1 equal to current G11V1 plus current G12I2. So if we consider I1 as the entering current to a particular node then G11V1 and G12I2 will leave that particular node. So let's say current I1 is entering this node and the potential difference between the two terminals is V1. I1 is entering this node. So G11 V1 will leave this node. The current in this branch is equal to G11 V1 because this black box is the admittance and it is represented by G11. And the voltage across this parameter is V1. So V1 when multiplied to admittance G11 will give us a current which is leaving this node. Now coming to the second leaving current which is G12I2 we will have one current dependent current source because I2 is the current in this branch and in this branch current is G12I2. So the current is depending on the current present in some other part of the network. So we have one current dependent current source providing us G1 to I2 and the current is leaving this node. 
So in this way we have obtained the half portion of our two port network and now we will obtain the second half portion by using equation number 2. Equation number 2 is KVL equation and here we have voltage V2 equal to voltage G21 V1 plus voltage G22 I2. Voltage V2 we know is this voltage and it is equal to this voltage plus this voltage and you can see that this voltage is equal to G22 I2. G22 is the impedance so this black box is the impedance and when current I2 flows through this impedance we have the voltage drop equal to G22 I2 and G21 V1 is the voltage which is depending on the voltage of some other part of the network therefore we have one voltage dependent voltage source providing us G21 V1 as the voltage so in this way we have obtained the two port network with 4G parameters now we will move on to the next part of the lecture in which we will find out the relation between H parameters and G parameters Let's say this 2 by 1 matrix is our matrix A and this 2 by 1 matrix is our matrix B. So we can say that matrix A will be equal to matrix G multiplied to matrix B. We can say that matrix A will be equal to the G parameters matrix multiplied to matrix B. And in case of H parameters lecture, we saw that matrix B is equal to the H parameters matrix when multiplied to matrix A. From here, we can say that matrix A will be equal to the inverse of H parameters matrix multiplied to matrix B. Now compare this and this, you will find matrix G is equal to the inverse of matrix H. Similarly, you can have the result matrix H is equal to the inverse of matrix G. So from here we can convert the H parameters to G parameters and the G parameters to H parameters. We have already seen how to find out the inverse of a matrix in the earlier lectures and therefore I will directly give you the results when we want to convert the H parameters to G parameters then G11 will be equal to parameter H22 divided by the determinant of H parameters matrix parameter G12 will be equal to minus parameter H12 divided by the determinant of H. Parameter G21 is equal to minus H21 divided by the determinant and finally parameter G22 is equal to parameter H11 divided by the determinant and we can have the conversion of G parameters to H parameters H11 will be equal to G22 divided by the determinant of G parameters matrix parameter H12 will be equal to minus G12 divided by the determinant of G parameter H21 will be equal to minus parameter G21 divided by the determinant and parameter H22 will be equal to parameter G11 divided by the determinant. So this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.